Hello and welcome to Back to the Frame Rate, part of the Western Media Podcast Network. Back to the Frame Rate, where we watch and discuss films on VOD and streaming platforms for your entertainment. I am your host, Nathan Shore, and alongside me are my fantastic movie mavens, Brianna Butterworth, Ellie Escobar, and Sam Cole. Hello, everybody. Hello. 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 Well, welcome back, everyone. And I think tonight's going to be a really fun episode. We have our 2024 movie forecast. It's It's been a year. You know, this is sort of an anniversary episode for us because about a year ago, we did this for 2023. How exciting. I can't believe it's been a, a, a year. How time flies. I know. And, uh, you know, I had the intention actually of trying to find a couple of clips from that episode, but I realized that that is such a, a sad recording. I didn't even want to go down that path. Let's do better this year. I, yeah, we can always improve. I hadn't heard that recording in a while, but now that you said it sounds terrible, my first instinct is to go and listen to it and laugh. <laughs> Yeah, all of our recording settings were bad. Microphones weren't working. And I had mm. like an auto leveler on my microphone. So every time I wasn't speaking, the room noise raised up. So it just sounded terrible. I had forgotten that completely until you mentioned it. And I guess my like mind or memory had like blacked it out on purpose. And I was like, oh, now I remember that. Yeah, the audio yeah. issues. Yeah, it was a nightmare. But you know what? <laughs> Episode number one is is never something that sh- sh- probably should ever be listened to of any show. That's why they call it like a pilot episode. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, a lot of times they, uh, the, you bank a bunch of episodes just as a test run and you probably never should put those out there. But anyways, it was fun to do. You know, funny thing is it's one of our most popular episodes still. People still go back and listen to that because I think there are some completists out there that need to hear every episode of Back to the Frame Rate, and I, I feel sorry for them. But. It's it's the it's the <laughs> flagship episode. It's it's the beginning of it all. The, exactly. the genesis, just like Star Trek Two. <laughs> yeah, might as well start the Star Trek references early in 2024 because you know why not? Why not? Exactly. So uh, what we're doing here tonight is we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna do our, our 2024 most anticipated films of the year. And just like last year, we're going to list about 10 movies that are on the calendar. And what I was trying to emphasize is that, of course, there are movies that are coming out, you know, with the the SAG strikes and the writer strikes. So much changed this in 2024, as we've already talked about things were on the calendar and they got moved. Movies didn't go into production that they were supposed to, that were on the calendar. They got moved. So, you know, don't hold us to this. The calendar the dates of these movies change all the time a movie that is on my was on my list a week ago which is one of, one of my most anticipated movies of the year just got taken off and i don't know what to do now so i am really really a little perplexed on this i i i feel like i might just keep it on there just for the hopes that it will stay it will somehow show up sometime in 2024 otherwise i guess it'll be on my my forecast for 2025 we'll see i'm curious if anybody else has the same movie on their list but let's get to it so how we're going to do this each one of us is just going to mention one of the movies that is on their list no particular order for these we're just going to mention them and then maybe just explain you know why they're looking forward to it and we'll have a mini discussion and then we'll just kind of keep going around the room around the table and until we mention all the movies that we're looking that we that's on our list so how let's begin right now i love just throwing sam into the mix so sam tell me the one of the 10 movies that you're most excited for for 2024 so any one of the 10 like anywhere on the list anywhere in the list because at the end of this just to spoil a little bit we are going to also mention what our what is going to be our most favorite movie of, of 2024? So just any random movie. Well, one of the 10 would definitely be Beetlejuice 2, unless that's <laughs> the one that got moved. I hope not. It's still coming out in 2024, right? No, I think Beetlejuice 2 is definitely still on on the calendar. And Excellent. I know um, it's September 6th because it's also yeah. on my list. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, also on my list, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good taste club. I'm looking forward to it. Like it, it, I wouldn't say it's not, 
it's not my most anticipated movie of the year, but I just love the fact that they're making another one and like all the same talent is back and Tim Burton's back. It just feels right. It's like a family coming back together and you're like, oh, I got to see this. <laughs> I as well am looking forward to this. Although I will say I am cautiously optimistic just because of all the delays for it, but uh, I I can't help it. I mean, there's so much of the original cast that is coming back. You got Catherine O'Hara mm-hmm. that's in this, but you know you've got uh, Jenna Ortega in this, Wyna Ryder, Willem Dafoe is in this too. I mean, he seems like a perfect yeah. actor to be to be in this movie as well. He'll fit right into that universe, yeah. <laughs> like, and when was the last time Tim Burton's done something like this for a while? I have not enjoyed. I'll, I'll be honest, I love Tim Burton, but it's been. A long time since I've been excited for a Tim Burton movie. So this, mm. I that's why I'm I'm cautious. So I know but, this was yes. back in like 2010, but I actually yeah. and I think it was poorly reviewed. But I actually did like Alice in Wonderland. I thought it was pretty entertaining, like visually. Mm. I mean, it, the 3D, like I I enjoyed it. Crispin Glover as a villain, like it was just that felt like an interesting Tim Burton movie to me. But he's, I mean, yeah, it's obviously it was a while ago. My favorite Tim Burton movie is Big Fish, which I think makes me like the most outsider person. So you're welcome to to your Alice in Wonderland opinions here, Sam. I saw I, Big I Fish. Love I Big like Fish. Big Fish. Yeah. Saw that in the theater. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be, Big Fish 2004, was it? Sorry. Around there. Yeah. It's around there. Big Fish was probably my last Tim Burton movie that I truly loved. Hmm. Yeah. Um, by the way, I think I was mistaken. Did I say that Beetlejuice was on my list? It's actually one of my honorable mentions, so it's not on my list. That's, I think, why. Because it's I'm kind of like, I hope it's great. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm so nervous about it. Okay. <laughs> I like the idea of coming back to an era that is so far behind, but I feel like it's going to bring me back there. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Hell yes. I feel like it can use CGI well, like in the with ghostly world stuff. Like if it still maintains the creative heart is the first one, it could be visually more out there, which I always look forward to, especially mm-hmm. from Tim Burton. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, B, give me one mm-hmm. of yours. This Valentine's Day is the Bob Marley biopic. And I'm kind yeah. of... Nice. I'm kind of looking forward to that. It'll be like at its worst, I think it'll be a great jam session. And then at its best, I hope they do a great job with it. So, some date night idea, folks. Yeah, I actually have first. that on my list as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. We I should go see it, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's just, it's just so long, just for the music, even. It's worth it. Right. <laughs> I bet like if my theater's not singing, I'm walking out. Like that's gotta be it's gotta be good. There's some concert season there. They look good. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna hold out. I'm waiting for Ellie and B's opinions on this because I am again cautious about it. Music biopics, I have not seen a great one in a long time, but you know, let me know mm-hmm. how it goes. Because if you love it, let me know. I, I'll rush out to see it. The trailer yeah. looks great, so it caught my attention. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. I'm with you. <laughs> Ellie, give me one that you're looking forward to. Civil War. Yes. Yes. Mm. That's on my list as well. Civil War. Yeah. Civil War. Just because a of firecracker of a motion picture. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I'm like so t- looking forward to that because. Just because of everything that's going on in the world right now, you know, and, and what's so especially sc- here in the United States. What's so <laughs> scary, though, is I hope it's not so, like, triggering that, like, people, you know that on CNN, at one movie theater somewhere in the U.S., mm-hmm. probably in the middle of it, not making any judgment, <laughs> but there's going to be, like, a fight breaking out in the audience between, oh, like, goodness. divided Civil War sides. Oh, you know, like- I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope not as well, but I'm just saying, it, like, I'm if the movie is good, then, like, it might stir up emotions. That's what worries me a little bit, but we'll see. Hmm. I, tra- I knew nothing about it, and I saw the trailer, and it gripped me. I was like, wow, yeah, this too. could be this... this could be intense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was it like, has the crazy... Was- has the craziest yeah. cast. It does. Civil, Civil War is on my list. So if anyone isn't aware, this it takes place in the near future. A team of journalists travel across the United States 
during a rapidly escalating civil war that has engulfed the entire nation. That's a brief synopsis of this. But it's Alex Garland, who is one of my top four or five favorite filmmakers today, directed this. It's from A24. It comes out April 26th, a couple months from now. Uh, this this movie actually it's on my list but scares the hell out of me what's you know it's it's being an election year right now this <laughs> i am i am more than any movie coming out this year I, i'm really this movie is getting under my skin a little bit that's the thing it's like that's what i mean it's like a powder keg of a film it makes that's what i'm saying like it, it's like it could be good but it's also a little worrisome like oh man i hope this doesn't hit too close to home like i know i know but it <laughs> you hope but you know how it is <laughs> with movies yeah. and, and you know it will too like that's the, the movie is like it's it's probably that will do well i predict box office yeah. wise mm-hmm. yeah i think so i think it's so unless it uh, comes out and gets like terrible reviews and is terrible then it will have a big opening weekend and <laughs> drop but i don't foresee that so i'm gonna randomly mention uh one of mine I will say it's going to be Drive Away Dolls, which comes out February 23rd. This is from Ethan Cohen. And Ethan Cohen, it's him solo. It's not with his brother. But this is the first time he's actually directed something, a live action film, I think, since the him when he did uh, Hail Caesar. Because Ballad of Bus. Wait, was Ballad of Buster Scruds both the Cohen brothers? I think brothers? that was both the Cohen brothers. Okay. But yeah. first, theatrical movie since hail caesar that's what i meant to say so because that went straight to netflix but seeing the mm-hmm. coen brothers in the movie in the in or one of the coens in the theater is has not happened in a while especially ethan cohen so this film follows jamie an uninhibited free spirit bemoaning yet another breakup with a girlfriend and her demure friend marianne who desperately needs to loosen up in search of a fresh start the two embark on an impromptu road trip to tallahassee but things quickly go awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way and this has matt damon pedro pascal margaret qualley coleman domingo i think coleman domingo was we just saw i just saw him in uh, what's the rustin movie which uh, I thought was pretty good, decent. But yeah, I saw him at, I am... I saw him at CVS the other day. Actually, <laughs> I was like, "What's up?" But uh, yeah, I, I, this is so. This is of course an action comedy thriller. I really, really looking forward to this one. So, Drive Away yeah. Dolls. That's on my list too, Nate. I Great. did not even know of the existence of that film, and it sounds incredible. It would have been on my list yeah. if I knew about it, but I didn't do my research well enough. Yeah. Woulda, yeah, I, shoulda, coulda. That's not the right words for the beginning of a new year. So I'm going to change that attitude and think positive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I only heard about it because I saw a trailer when I was looking up like movies that were coming out this year. It didn't even pop up. Only a month trailer. away. Yeah, interesting. Only huh. a month away. Yeah. All right. We're back to Sam. So you've already mentioned uh, Beetlejuice is on your list and Civil War is on your list. So hit us up with another one. Okay, so another movie that is definitely on my list, as I am always interested in this franchise, I believe it doesn't have a title, and I'm not sure if it's theatrical or not, but it's an untitled Alien movie, as in Alien Aliens Project, and it's uh, directed by... It's Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez, that's right. Yeah, um, this this is on my list as well. I think it's... Heard good things, yeah, but don't know much about it. I think it's tentatively titled Alien Romulus, but I know that's probably temporary. That's right. See, I remember hearing about that. And then when I saw this article that I was reading, it said untitled. So I don't know if they can change it, but Alien Romulus, that's what I think it is. Yeah. You're right. Um, yeah. And this no, is the first. Could be, it could be good. Yeah. Yeah. This is also on my list. This is the first Alien movie under 20th Century Studios, Disney owned mm-hmm. studio now. So I am. Again, cautiously, very cautiously optimistic what they're going to do with this franchise. And it's set after the events of Alien Covenant, is what, I, is what I've heard. But I don't really know. This might be a complete side quest to Alien. I don't know. They're, they're keeping the whole plot under wraps. Yeah. That would but be I, cool if it had a connection in any way to Alien Covenant. Because then in my geek mind, Prometheus... Alien Covenant and Alien Romulus would form an indirect trilogy. And I'm all about the trilogies. <laughs> yes. 
I hear you. And this has a relatively, I don't know much about the cast in this. I saw some of the names in this, but nobody jumped out at me, but I'm, you know, Fede Alvarez is a director who I, I, I have nothing to guess. He, he did the girl in the spider's web, which I did not see, but he did don't breathe kind of a suspense film from a couple years ago, which I thought was pretty good. And he did the evil dead movie from 2013, which I thought was decent reimagining of it. So yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Again, it's, it's on my list. So we'll, we'll see. Cause I'm a sucker for anything alien. <laughs> yeah, me too. And, and there was that, I did read an article. I can't remember exactly where it was from, but it was Ridley Scott apparently knows the full story. And when he saw the director of the footage, he was quoted as saying like, wow, this is, effing brilliant or something like that so i don't know if if, if it's a good positive in, endorsement i hope it's an awesome alien movie and a good visual experience as well i guess we'll find out this august yeah yeah that's august uh, 16th is the date for that interesting yeah all right b hit us up with another one has anyone here heard of the book of clarence it came out three days ago and i gotta get to it the Book of Clarence. No, what is that about? The Book of Clarence. So it is directed by the Bullets, who did The Harder They Fall in 2021, and it stars Lakeith Stanfield. And mm. it's about a down as luck man struggling to find a better life for his family while fighting to free himself of debt. He's captivated by the power and the glory of the rising Messiah and risks everything to carve his own path to a divine life, ultimately discovering the redemptive power of belief might be his only way out. I love Lakeith Stanfield. I'm interested in what the bullet does. I just got to see it. I'm so curious about it. I think it could be really good. And it seems weird. And I'm into anything that seems a little bit not mainstream. So let's give it a shot. And this is directed by the bullets, which Mm -hmm. I am unfamiliar with. Yep. Did the harder they fall. He is a singer songwriter and a music producer. I I heard of him like through Jay-Z, I think, but he, yeah, he's making it onto the movie scene these last few years. So that's exciting. Okay. I know about the harder they fall. I missed that one, but interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's on my list as well. It is. All right. I think, wow. Okay. I'm so glad you're bringing this up. All right. Yep. Looks cool. Yep. I'm having, I'm, I'm hoping to see it this week as well. So, cause already. I'll yeah. <laughs> Let me know how it is. I don't think I'll yeah. make it until the weekend. Let me know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. Ellie, we're up to you. Give me one on your list. Kingdom of the planet of the apes it comes out May 24th because I, I, first of all, I spent a whole week watching all of the planet of the apes movies last year, just rewatching some of them. I love everything Planet of the Apes. And so I'm looking forward to watching this one. I'm so excited about it. When I first saw the trailer in the movies, I was like, oh. I was like next to Carlos. And I'm like, oh my God, Carlos. And Carlos is like, oh yeah, that should be one of your, that might be one of my ear resolutions. Not to talk in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so I'm so looking forward to this movie. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. They're pushing this trailer a lot right now. So uh, I will probably see this. It didn't make my list, but uh, Wes Ball is the director for this. It comes out May 24th. Uh, he did the Maze Runner films, which I never saw any of them. I don't know. Has anyone uh, seen those? I've yeah, seen the fine. S- scenes from them and I've enjoyed the scenes, but I've never seen the whole movie. I've like bumped into it on HBO. Yeah, I've which... considered the Maze Runner movies. Uh, he did those. Uh, I've considered like a weekend where I catch up on all the Maze Runner movies, but I um, haven't. I think there's is there two or three of them. I forget. I don't know. But I think there's, they I look, think there's they three. There's like, I know the Scorch Trials is one of them, but I'm not sure which, which, which one that I is. I think it's one of those franchises that got abandoned because they underperformed in the, in the theater. So they never completed their, their, their story. I think there's, I could be yeah. wrong. There seemed to be this like generation of movies that was just like teens face dystopia, teens face the apocalypse. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was definitely. It was one of those. Yeah. I think we were kind of saturated by the time. Yeah, the Divergent Allegiant movies was another one of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. I never saw those either. Yeah. The Hunger Games gave us a lot to think about. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right. I think we're up to me. I'm going to mention one. I'm just going to mention, obviously, probably one that's on all of our lists. I mean, uh, Furiosa is is yes. one of the biggest ones. Here, here. That's, you know, uh, that's any- my penultimate one. Furiosa is my number one as well. <laughs> that comes out May 24th, directed by George Miller. We got Anya Taylor Joy, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Burke is in this. I don't think I have to say much about this. It, this is, I think the whole world is looking forward to this. The trailer looks amazing. So, I'll say like what I'm what I'm really excited about is the possible story structure of it because from what I've heard, like you know, Fury Road was so awesome, but it was essentially like one big long chase. Whereas this movie hmm. will obviously have a lot of vehicular action, but it takes place over it's a saga so it takes place over a longer span of time so she's like captured as a girl then it's her life and she escapes so at its best i feel like this movie could be like a mad max epic and a truly worthy sequel if it succeeds so if it's if it's awesome it could be awesome the trailer looked amazing their performances looked amazing i feel like chris hemsworth will be a notable psychotic villain that just sounds brilliant so Hope, you know, hopes are you, high. Yeah. You mentioned something. That's when I talk to people about Fury Road, the, most people love it, but the biggest complaint I hear about it is that nothing happens. Like it's just a chase movie that goes on and on and on. And if if you're not into that, you're not gonna like the movie. If if you're not because it's it's in some ways I can see why people complain that it's short on plot because it's it's so much action in it. I'm not one of those people, but no, my, no, yeah, the, I love the, the chase. The complaint, yeah. <laughs> the complaint I do hear from people is that it's just it's just one thing happening in this movie, and I and I and I do hope that that Furiosa isn't just the same thing again. That they do there is more, maybe more of an adventure aspect to it, possibly. I if it isn't, if it's just more you know, big cars going, running to the desert. I'm fine with that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully it'll be that. And like, it'll be the car yeah. epic action, but like a coming of age yeah. epic. Cause yeah. she's trying to find her family yeah. and like, yes, it's yeah. a rough mm-hmm. road. Yeah. Arguably Fury road had more plot than the original Mad Max though. So I don't know. <laughs> the yeah, the, admit, the Mad original Max. Mad Max is so entertaining. Well, it's well, like, well, let me tell you this, I have to tell you a story about Mad Max. Actually, when I was, you know, the first movie I ever saw was the road warrior. And I loved that movie so much when I was young. And then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome came out, I think it was 85. And it was playing, it was, yeah, 85. And I was on vacation with my parents and we were in Old Orchard Beach, Maine. And we saw the marquee at the drive-in. This is after, like weeks after Mad Max Thunder Beyond Thunderdome came out. We saw the marquee there. So they were going to take me to see Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. But it just said Mad Max on the marquee. Come to find out, they weren't showing Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. They were showing Mad Max, the 1979 original movie, which is not the kind of movie that I think a 10-year-old really would enjoy. It is a really (laughs) garish, you know, like dark film. And I remember as a 10-year-old watching this like, what the hell is this? This is like not fun. <laughs> this it was I was expecting like where's where's my Tina Turner and like cars and and crazy car chases and stuff like that. and it was like this like families are getting run down and like this it's the most depressing movie ever. And it's like mayhem like anarchic violence with like crazy colorful wacky characters and like you know yeah, and I just remember. I don't like, understand. There's like a fetish with like the police chief or something where it's like they just one of the characters is like wearing leather and has like no shirt, like a backless shirt, and you're like, what? You're like, why? Just <laughs> like, full Judas yeah. Priest mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was, and yeah. it wasn't. I don't think it was until we're about forty minutes into the movie where we kind of figured out that this was not the new Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome movie. <laughs> this is <laughs> the nineteen seventy nine original but it was kind of funny that i saw that in that order so this, oh, I, this movie didn't make my list i'm not a fan of my max sagas at mm. all so it didn't make my list at all i know you know it's uh, i know you guys are all excited about it i'm like <laughs> i think i saw i've seen the one with with the first matt max i ever saw was what's his name with uh, mel gibson mel gibson where the baby gets run over or something like that. Yeah, right? that's, that's, yeah, I'm that's talking Mad about Max. Yeah, the only one yeah. I saw, and I actually <laughs> liked it. 
But <laughs> then I really liked that movie. But I then after that, Tina Turner, I just like, I don't like this movie. And then the ones after that, <laughs> except for Charlize Theron movie, because I like her. But even that, I was like, eh. it's, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not a fan of <laughs> this. Yeah. I, I think there are movies that like don't really form a connection for a lot of people. Yeah. I think you're probably like in a in a majority here. Yeah, just doesn't mm-hmm. do anything it's okay. for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not you're That's not right. alone, Ellie. I me I took my wife to see Mad Max Fury Road. She hated the movie so much, hated it, <laughs> hated it. Yeah. Like yeah. it's you know. Oh my God. I mean, I go see it because Carlos would want to go see it, and you know we he has to see yeah. my films. So I have to. That's the deal. Even yeah. if you don't like my film, you'll still have to come <laughs> see it with me. And I so, saw it. I like. I saw it with my dad, and he he liked it. Like he likes action, but I can tell that the world of like Mad Max, it's weird, gritty, creepy, like gasoline mm-hmm. world, is much more entertaining to me than my father. I think he likes it, but I think he liked it, but feels kind of a distant from it. A distance from it, whereas me, I'm like, oh, man. like I saw the Furiosa trailer and I became like, a, like a, one of those, like a, a fan of like a football team, just like yelling in the stands, like, <laughs> it just looked, looked awesome. But yeah, I hear you. They just look like a lot of junkyard cars hitting each other or something. <laughs> yes. I don't yeah. know. It's like, <laughs> why couldn't like, and you'd be right. Yeah, just a matter of time before they they have the twisted metal TV show, but they should make the twisted metal movie look like this. That's fine. <laughs> um, was Furio- Furiosa on anyone else's list besides me and Sam, or just mine? And and mm-hmm. B. Okay. Just wait. Yeah. All right, so we are up to B. Give us. Um, wait, no, no, that was mine. Furiosa, Sam, we're up to you. Okay. By the way, on a, a brief humorous note, we were talking about Furiosa, and I was for some for no reason at all was reminded of the first Harry Potter film where Hermione says, "It's not Leviosa, it's Leviosa," and then Ron imitates her, and I was like, "It's not Furiosa, it's Furiosa." Anyway, there's my my bit of comedy. And so back to back to the list. Definitely highly anticipated on my list is Dune Part Two. Dune. Dune. <laughs> Dune. <laughs> I'm never gonna let that down, huh? Nope. I gotta go back and listen to that episode. I, I, I'm sure I'm exaggerated and made it much worse. If I go back and hear it again, it'll just sound normal. No, but in I my mind's it, eye at the time, it was great. I think it does sound just like that. <laughs> <laughs> but Dune too, yeah, definitely like anticipated. Dennis mm-hmm. Villeneuve has described it as like a lot more of an action film than the first one, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of the novel, and I've read it, and so I know what he's talking about like i know it's coming so i can't wait to see how it Mm. comes across visually directorial wise acting wise special effects wise there is huge desert battle Mm. in the story of this movie and so i just can't wait to see that it's strange that it's coming out march 1st which is great but because it was originally going to be november of last year but it got moved so it feels odd to have like a gigantic movie like that come out at the beginning of March, but that's happened before. So it's like, I'm not complaining. I can't wait to see it. And it's coming out soon, like less than two months. Yeah. I, Is, uh, do, yeah. Go ahead. It's, a, it's Go ahead, on my Abby. list too, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Do. Yep. Mine too. It could back be. to the frame I mean, rate party. Back Let's to the frame to the rate. Part of the Western media podcast. <laughs> and you know, we get Christopher Walken. And Dune yeah. as well. Mm. Is that cool? we and he looks like look- intense, serious Christopher Walken, not like winging it, Chris Walken. He's like, I you know. can tell he's like, I'm in Dune, and I'm gonna, like, <laughs> gonna I'm gonna do my dialed best. in. Yeah, <laughs> I have to figure out which theater around me has the best sound because I think Dune's gonna need like really good sound. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. You need you need the good like surround sound. Yeah. All I want to hear those grains of sand. Functional. Yeah, exactly. The, th- <laughs> well, the thumpers on the sand when they call the worms. It's like. <laughs> well, I'm assuming yeah. it's going to be at the the IMAX in Providence. You probably won't be here for that, Sam. But I probably won't. But if I was, I'd be at that IMAX. But there is a really good IMAX in LA that I like. Screen is a little bit smaller than the Providence IMAX, but it's it's such a quality theater that I. Yeah. I like that's where I'll go. Yeah. Well, obviously, if I'm there, I have no idea where I'll be. <laughs> Dune Two is also on my list. So, see, I hope this does well. A quick comment because Denis Villeneuve wants to direct 
Dune Messiah, which is the second book, but he would treat it as Mm. the end of a trilogy. And if this movie is financially successful and that gets greenlit, that would be awesome because I would love to see what his vision for that would be. I have a feeling Dune 2 is going to do much more business than the first Dune. Because remember, also, Dune was a day and date release. Uh, yes. That came, out, that, was, that came out. That was one of the deals with HBO back when all their movies were coming out on HBO. And like there was a whole bunch of movies. Matrix, that major sequel, that Kong vs. Godzilla, a whole bunch of films. They had a deal during, was in COVID. So mm. there's a chance I think this will do much better. Plus the anticipation of this. Because I think it has a much bigger following than it's than it just it's grown in notoriety over the past couple of years. Yeah, I think it's 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 looked at as a very as a, one of the better sci-fi films in a long time. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And I People like want I to remember see how the that story concludes. That's the thing. People want to see how the story concludes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like the first film set everything up so well that like the, I yeah. just feel like two is going to be like a payoff and then some yeah. it's just like the vibe i get yeah. all right so i think we're at b yeah uh, hit us up with another one i'm looking forward to the bike riders this june june yes. 21st i think this is going to be awesome jody comer austin butler sort of a, a motorcycle looks like a bit of a road movie turns bit of a gang movie yeah. turns bit of a drama yep. it's gonna be cool this is on my list as well Jeff Nichols, one of my favorite directors also right now. I do not know much about this movie, but it sounds intriguing. Tom Hardy is in this. Boyd Holbrook, who's also one of my favorite actors right now as well. Norman Reedus. Great cast in this. Michael Shannon. It is. Uh, I I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for this one. It's on my list too. Great. Great. Good taste club. (laughs) Uh, That is the bike riders. Yeah. Mm-hmm. June twenty first. Looks really great. I can't wait to see that one. All right, mm-hmm. all right, Ellie, we're up to you. Ah, Deadpool three. Deadpool three. Gotta go see Deadpool three. That is also on my list. <laughs> I mean, come on, how can you not go see Deadpool? It's Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. <laughs> this is wow. it's like one of my favorite superheroes because he's so silly and funny and goofy and. He yeah. is, and I'm excited about it because, like, 2023 was such a bad year for, like, well, there were some it good was. movies, but, like, in general, superhero, superhero movies did not fare well in 2023. And Deadpool, I, I really like the first one. I remember Redemption. enjoying the second. Redemption. Yeah, the yeah. first one was really awesome, too. Like, mm. I just, it's a totally different type of superhero, though, right? It's, like, mm-hmm. so unexpected. And I think that mm-hmm. we need a superhero like that in our world right now. This one is still going to be, I mean, I had, cause I haven't read up on it, but this film will still be rated R, right? Like they're not going to PG 13 if I did, that would be a bad mistake. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think so. I think this is still, I don't think so. And of course you got the return of Wolverine in this as well. Hugh Jackman. I think that's also going to, to entice a lot of people to come out mm-hmm. and see this. So I think that a lot of people cannot wait for this. Yep. Yep. Okay, yeah. great pick. I I'm also really looking forward to this. Like I said, like I said last week, that's on my birthday weekend. I will be there. Yeah. Yeah. When does it right. come out? July? Is it July twenty sixth? Nice. Yeah. yeah. My mom's birthday right. is July twenty fifth. Oh, my dad's oh. birthday is July twenty sixth. How about that? <laughs> All right. So I am. I think we're up oh, to me. I'm going to mention. We're not the so movie. far apart. Mil Nova Nova Cento Noventa <laughs> Yocho. <sorry. laughs> So I'm going to mention the movie that I'm nervous about that may be moved off of 2024, but I'm going to gamble that it's going to find a home somewhere. And that is Mickey 17, which is directed yes. by Bong Joon-ho. That's all uh, too. It got I kicked just, off? Yeah, it was supposed to come out March 29th. Yeah. And I mean, this movie is basically done and I don't know what's going on. But for some reason, this movie was taken off the calendar. And because the movie's basically done, I feel like they're just kind of jockeying for position somehow. I don't know. Maybe there's special effects that aren't finished or something. I, I don't know. They're really holding their cards close to the vest why it's been moved. Mm. But is there I, something else coming out that weekend? Like, is Godzilla Kong or something big? I think I, I read that was that weekend. 
Speaking of big weekends, what um, we were just talking, I just totally random comment, but I just realized that Ghostbusters is that weekend. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes and Furiosa open the same weekend. They will be competing over Memorial Day. That could be a, a money, money weekend right there. <laughs> but, but I don't yeah, feel but... like a Bong Joon-ho movie is going to compete with Ghostbusters. So I don't know. But anyways, this movie, we got we got Robert Pattinson, Tony Collette, Mark Ruffalo, Stephen Yoon. I mean, in that plot, because I don't think a lot of people maybe are know everything about this, but it, it, an expendable person is sent on the most dangerous, even suicidal jobs. When an expendable dies, a new body is regenerated with a, with most of the memories intact. Essentially, Mickey 7, I think I wrote this right here, is the seventh iteration of an expendable who is undergoing an, ex, an existential identity crisis while trying to keep his successor's regeneration a secret and negotiating with the planet's native species on a dangerous trip to colonize a new ice world. So I'm there. Yeah. I'm so hyped for Mickey 17. Yeah. So I awesome. I just hope it is comes out sometime this year. That's all I know. (laughs) It will. And and if it doesn't, it'll be on my list for 2024. (laughs) Is this on, I sounds like B, this is on your list. Yeah. Anyone else's list? It was on my list, and then it's honorable mention because I had to mm-hmm. go between okay. that one and the other one, so I went with the other one. <laughs> okay. That bumped. All right, so we are back to Samwise. So out of sheer curiosity, and I'm just, you know, because I really enjoyed the first one. This is a very indirect oh, I sequel. I bet you this is mine. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, Twisters. That's I the one I picked. No. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think so, no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> I had a feeling I'd be on my own here, but that's what I'm talking about. I thought you were going <laughs> to say something else. What, whatever you thought I was going to say, that might be on my list. We'll find out. But uh, <laughs> Twisters is a, a sequel to Twister, 1996. Twisters. And I just l- love being terrified torn- by tornadoes, and I really enjoyed the first movie. I have no idea what this film will be like if the spirit of it will be good, if it will be total schlock, but I am intrigued, uh, and it comes out July 19th, and uh, Twisters, yeah, we'll see what's up with that. <laughs> you know, what's, it's, what's interesting is, it's directed by Lee Isaac Chung, yes. who only a few years ago directed Minari, which was, uh, it's just an interesting selection for him to be tapped for this film, but uh, I am, I'm interested yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm curious. I, I'm not, I, I don't know. I, you're on a mission, Sam, to go out and see what this is about <laughs> and report back. That's I did the same thing with, you know, Independence Day Resurgence, and it was yeah. very hurtful and painful, but I, I still went. So I'm going to go see Twisters and support my 28-year-old like, favorite film. <laughs> I feel like this could be the 65 of this year. Uh, God, I hope not. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, no. All right. B, what do you got? My cautiously optimistic sequel, Gladiator 2. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. I yeah. forgot about that. That should have been on my list. That's what I thought you were going to say. That You know what that is? That just knocked off a movie you shall not know that is it's Gladiator <laughs> not, 2. Not Twister. Not Twister not, still not, has to stay. Twister still remains. This was a movie that that I had not discussed yet. Gladiator 2 takes it over because I missed Napoleon in the theater. I saw some of it late night on my flat screen TV. It was highly entertaining, but I want to see it on a big screen, but it's only playing in one theater in Boston on Tremont Street. Don't want to go over there parking on it. Anyway, yeah, interested in Gladiator 2. Sorry to yeah. uh, tangent there. I am, mm-hmm. it's, it's, on, it's an honorable mention for me. I mean, it's Ridley Scott, you know? Mm. Yeah. A, a true visualist. Mm-hmm. All right. Ellie, hit us up with something. Ballerina. Ballerina. Yep. It's Len Weissman is the director and it's a spin off, I think, from the John Wick saga. And I think Keanu is going to make an appearance in that film. Anna de Armas, which is one of my favorite actresses right now. And, uh, and yeah, it's just a, a, it's about a young female assassin uh, seeking revenge. Against the people who killed her family, so it's gonna be great. I just know it because awesome. Anna the Armas, because Len well. Wiseman, 
Huh? Len Wiseman what did. Uh, That's what scares me that Len Wiseman's directing this. <laughs> he did Why? live free, live free or die hard. wasn't uh, that wasn't terrible. wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. wasn't it. too bad. He, he did also did the Total Recall sequel. I did not see did, that. Yeah. Did a lot of underworld underworld movies. Mm. This, he's he's you know well I mean I don't begrudge you for looking forward to this. I what what. I'm not here to be negative on anything. And I sometimes mm-hmm. am a little overly negative. Like, I'm not here to be about. negative, but F this movie, yo. <laughs> no, no, I, I am looking forward to this. Cause I, of course, you know, we all had, I think uh, some of a lot of appreciation for John wick Four. I feel like this is going to be a major come down from this, especially since I really, really disliked the continental and I have a very sour taste for mouth from that. And I, I remember like, your review of the continental. Yeah. And, very and, lukewarm, yeah. and I, and I just felt like it was, I, I like really... the continental. Okay. So I don't know what you're talking about, but ballerina is simply because Keanu and Anna, the armors are going to be in that movie. I'm there. I, yeah. I don't really care about, you know, like Len Weissman directed, but hopefully the actors will carry the movie. I hope it's great. I really do hope it's great. <laughs> I hope it spawns a whole nother gr- franchise that the John Wick universe goes on. And this is an amazing movie. I, I don't want it to be bad. I want it to be awesome. So, yeah. Look, we're getting less and less original IP these days. At least make the regurgitations fun. You know, <laughs> this looks like it could be fun. Ian McShane's yeah. in it. I'm excited for that. Yeah. I hadn't heard it about is- it until just now. I was Googling it. <laughs> and I think it will be, it will be the final send off for i'm sorry the, the actor that we did lose i feel awful that i'm oh dropping. yeah that's his name uh what's his name uh, this is the kind of thing that i should have at the top lance reddick sorry yeah. i got i just remember so anyways but yes he is in this as well so anyways i hope it i hope it honors him well pretty well in this movie so so I'm yeah i think i'm gonna read there too yeah so yeah. i and i love like Norman, I, so. I, I, I hope it's i hope it is a very good film I do. All right. I think I have a pick coming up here and I think what haven't I mentioned yet? So this is one that I bet it's going to be on no one else's list. I want to say I'm really looking forward to Horizon, an American saga. This is actually a, a two for pick because Kevin Costner is doing two movies this year, which is a part one and a part two called Horizon American Saga, part one and part two. It's this epic Western. And I do love modern Westerns, especially when they're done on a grand scale, grand budget. And this is the first time he's directed anything in ages. The last time he tried to do something like this, it was The Postman and was terrible. But he also, this guy also <laughs> did Dances with Wolves. And I do think Waterworld is very underrated. So I, I, I enjoy Waterworld. I enjoy Waterworld. Yeah. So I'm so glad I'm on a pro Waterworld pod. <laughs> and this has got Sam Worthington in it. Sienna Miller, Kevin Costas is in this. Uh, Luke Wilson, Abby Lee, Tom Payne. This explores the lore of the Old West and how it was won and lost through blood, sweat, and tears of many, spanning four years of the Civil War from 1861 to 1865. Costner's ambitious cinematic adventure will take audiences on an emotional journey across a country at war with itself, experienced through the lens of families, friends, and foes attempting to discover what it truly means to be the United States of America. So this feels like his like grand vision. This is the this is the the project that he left, which is the big show he, that's on TV right now that I don't oh, watch. Oh God, yeah, um, I know what you're talking about my, my brain. Oh man, Yellowstone? No. Yes. So obviously he's, yeah. he's been the the star of Yellowstone for years. This is the project that he left Yellowstone to create. This has been, I feel like, his big. Magnum opus that he's been working for, for this has been his vision for a long time. So I, someone's going to make the, the, this giant Western, two part Western, you know, coming out June 28th and August 16th. I am extremely curious. And I do think that Kevin Costner is a fine director that has a strong vision and uh, I am on board for this. So, Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's two parts, and wait, so there's two films that are both coming out the same year? Yes. June 28th and August 16th, like two feature-length films coming out this year. Wow. I hope it's oh. good. I just I hope there's, like, memorable characters. The palette sounds so big. It's like, I hope it's yeah. not, like, just a montage. You know what I mean? Like, I hope it oh, focuses I don't think, I, in. I, I think there's just a gigantic, sweeping epic about the Civil War, which 
it feels like a like a kind of like a really scott type of thing you know that's, and that's this, this, this is yeah. why and i think kevin costner is a guy that can tell the story uh, that's interesting reason, that the I two parts like come out so close to each other like it's and i it's unique like usually it's like i remember um clint eastwood had the the like letters from Iwo Jima and it's flags of our father. fathers. Yeah. And those were like further months apart. Like mm. that's an interesting strategy yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. We are back to Sam. All right. So let me see. So one that made the list, cause I am interested though, not over the moon on is a quiet place. Day one. I really like the first two. This is not going to be directed by John Krasinski, but uh, one thing I wanted to say is, so this goes back to when the aliens first arrived. And so I just feel like it can really tell that story really well and can be exciting and well done. I am looking forward to it. Ultimately, I think I would have preferred a quiet place part three that took place after the second film and like concluded an arc, like did a trilogy. Yeah. So for this film to just jump back in a different direction before two linear stories, I would have preferred one more story in the same like trajectory. That being said, though, I will go to this movie with an open mind and uh, hopefully it'll be good, but, but looking forward to it. I, I agree with everything you just said. I would have also liked that third movie, but this is on my honorable mentions list for the, for the same reasons. Oh, I'm, nice. I'm also looking forward to it. Yeah. Mm. Yep. All mm -hmm. right. B, I think you have maybe one more. I have if, one if, more. If my, if my math is right. <laughs> Your math is right. So this okay. is my like, I'm so excited for this movie. And we don't get it until the end of the year, until December, but it's going to be amazing, is the the new animated Lord of the Rings, The War of the Roar. Mm -hmm. I yes. am so amped. I'm so excited. Miranda Otto's coming back. She's reprising her role. It's a story based on the appendices that Tolkien wrote in Lord of the Rings. So I think a lot of people who aren't familiar with other parts of the story or going to get to learn about it and be part of that world. I was not a huge fan of the Hobbit trilogy. I thought it was a really, really not great use of CGI in a lot of places. So I'm kind of excited to see the animated approach. So we have kind of the very practical effects, have the original trilogy, the CGI Hobbit, and now something animated, I think will be really fun. I can't wait. And it was just, I have Mar to wait. Miranda Otto's coming back as Eowyn. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I um, know. I am excited too. And I just, I wish the movie well and I want to see it. I hope it does well just because Warner Brothers is planning on making more Lord of, the, I mean, Middle Earth movies. Yeah. And so I, this one is their first. So it feels like the flagship kind of test. And mm -hmm. I hope it does well because I'm always down to go to Middle Earth if there's a 100%. well told story with characters there. So, like, yeah, count me in mm -hmm. to that. Yeah million percent i'm a little cool on rings of power but i watch it anyway just because like i'm in middle earth you know i like so rings it. of power and and I, it's not great but it's really like there's some spectacular moments i i won't go into this now but the the whole issue with like what they have right the rights to like in terms Yo, of the yeah. tolkien estate they can only get parts of the thing and so i read a whole thing about that find it really frustrating but that's like a whole other topic but uh, yeah the show <laughs> is 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 I'm looking forward to season two, let's say that, which comes out this year, I think. Does it? I was trying so to find information on I that. I thought it did. I heard it did, but I wouldn't I wouldn't have been surprised if it was twenty twenty five, but I heard it was coming out this fall. Okay. Well, I could I could I be wrong know. on that. But yeah, I wasn't I'll sure. I wasn't sure they even started filming because I know with the the strikes, a lot of the those things they got was terrifying. Like they filmed, they pushed through, they did film, but they filmed like without some of the writers, I think, to be honest. Oh, so, shit. Who needs see what that? Happens. Who yeah. needs that, right? <laughs> My facts see, may be slightly not great, right, but it's true. If yeah. anyone caught the Golden Globes, there actually was a, a slightly funny bit where, like, there was an awards introduction where they tried to award they, – they did it. They did a bit where two of the presenters said, this is what happens when you don't have writers helping us with – with the awards or something like that. And they just did it in the most deadpan, awful presentation. <laughs> like these these awards things. It was, it was, I've never watched the Golden Globes before, but it, was, it, it wasn't it was that funny, but they tried to like mock what it was like to not have writers in their awards presentation. And Good. 
Never mind. Never mind. Anyways. I wish I'd yeah, seen so- I missed the gold one. I wish I'd seen him. Yeah. So that's the Lord of the Rings. I think it's called the War of the Rohirrim. I, I don't yes, know indeed. The Rohirrim. 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 Okay, Rohirrim. Thank you. Thank you. Rohirrim. Like Sam's probably right. I think it's the Rohirrim, but I double <laughs> fact check Sam's probably right. Yeah. And the description yeah. says it's the untold story behind Helm's Deep hundreds of years before the fateful war, mm-hmm. telling of telling telling the life and blood-soaked times of its founder, Helm Hammerhand, the king of Rohan. All right. Helm Hammerhand! Sorry. Very cool. All right. If my math is right, Ellie, you have one more on your yep. list. My last one is Joker 2, obviously, mm-hmm. because I love Joaquin and I loved the first Joker. But it, there was so much emotion in that movie. And I hope that they can carry the story back to continue to tell his story of, you know, where it ended and why Joker is who he is. So I'm looking forward to to what happens next because joker one was i was over the moon with the movie and i'm so glad that he won the oscar for his performance because he just i don't think he'll ever top what's his name there for me keith uh, what's it keith ledger keith ledger's performance Mm -hmm. i think he's always gonna be my number one joker but joaquin is definitely my second one <laughs> but mm-hmm. i just i look forward to that movie and see lady gaga and see what she does with uh harley quinn we'll see yeah. how she does yes. because you know lady gaga yeah. so you know who she is i think she's gonna bring the character to life in a different way that other harley quinn's done it i have high mm-hmm. expectations for her so in this movie hopefully well, she, do you think she'll be as good though as uh, Keith Richardson in Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End? <laughs> so I couldn't even. I'm sorry, I couldn't even. I was gonna try to like sell that joke, but I'm like, no, let's just move on. And... No, I don't think so, Sam. Yeah. I no, no. think not. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I cratered I you, that one. Just I give you a credit yeah. just for trying, though. <laughs> All in the name of comedy. There you go. <laughs> So it's uh, Joker. I think it, the full title is Joker Folle Adieu, and that's uh, October fourth. It's going to be a musical. Yes, that's uh, also worth noting. So I am uh, very curious about that. I, I, you know, it's funny. I didn't put this on my list or my honorable mentions. I think it's just because my list is so packed. Uh, I liked, I liked uh, the Batman, not the Batman Joker a lot. I'm getting these two franchises mixed up, Joker a lot. But uh, yeah, I just couldn't fit it on anywhere. But. Yeah, good pick. Good pick, for sure. Yeah. I think Lady Gaga is a great actress, too. I'm with you, Ellie. Yeah. We'll see what yeah, she does. Singer, actor, great artist. It could be amazing, great yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I have one more on mine, then. I say, what haven't I mentioned? That was mentioned. That was mentioned. All right. So I here's my last one. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to switch it out, but I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm going to go with this one. So it is going to be a movie called Alto Nights. And this comes out November 15th. Now, this movie is directed by Barry Levinson and is written by Nick Pileggi. Pileggi? Pileggi? Anyway, so this is a gangster oh. film starring Robert De Niro. And he's cool. done a lot of these, but I just never been done before. I just love the fact that it's Barry Levinson and Nick Pleggy that are behind this. And of course, Italian American crime bosses, Vito uh, Genovese and Frank Costello run their respective families during the 20th century, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, Robert De Niro, but working with Barry Levinson, I, I, you know, I eat the stuff up. So I'm just thinking like, if I, I want to see this, I just want to see this. This comes out November 15th. I'm there. I'm totally there. It's more of the same. I know. This is why I was thinking, like, do I need this? But yes, I do. I totally need to see this. <laughs> so overrated. More I'm sorry. Movies. I'll it's, see it. No, I, I want to. I, I want to. Yeah, I love I'm a sucker stuff. for I, it. Yeah. I'm a, again. You know, I realize that this. I just love the team that's behind doing this. I just want to see him yell at someone and be like, "Get it done today, <laughs> today, today, today." <laughs> There we go. So, Sam, I think you have a couple left because I have I have one left actually. Right, um, maybe I, I I okay. What is the one you got left? Then I have to kind of recap. 
The one I have left is Inside Out 2. I think that it, I really like the first one, Mm -hmm. and this could revitalize Pixar's, like, did not have a particularly stellar 2023. I feel like this could just be back to form and maybe a bigger box office hit. And I just, I like the story of the first one. Good memories of watching that film. And so I, I would see this one. Like I'm not, I wouldn't rush out to the theater, but if it gets positive reviews, I will, I will go see it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. I, I will, I will be seeing good. this one as well. Yeah. All right. There you have it. Now, just because I missed one on your list, Sam, because you may have said that was also on my list. I didn't catch it. Let's just recap our list. Each of us one time, Sam, go through yours. Like from the first from one through ten yeah, so, uh, any, any order any order here the ones that you mentioned others two ones to so i my top 10 was furiosa dune part two deadpool three civil war inside out two a quiet place day one sorry twisters alien romulus beetlejuice two and i switched my number 10 to gladiator two. <laughs> oh, that's what i missed gladiator two yeah it was originally joker part two B, give me a recap of yours, please. You got it. Beetlejuice 2, Bob Marley One Love, The Book of Clarence, Drive Away Dolls, Gladiator 2, The Bike Riders, Dune Part 2, Mickey 17, Furiosa, and of course, The Lord of the Rings. Woo! And Ellie, please please recap your 10. Civil War. Bob Marley, Joker 2, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Dune, Deadpool 3, Beetlejuice 2, The Book of Clarence, Ballerina, and the Bike Riders. All right. And mine was Civil War, Drive Away Dolls, Alien Romulus, Furiosa, Dune Part 2, Bike Riders, Deadpool 3, Mickey 17, Horizon Part 1 and 2, which I know is a cheat. Because it's two movies, but that's okay. And Alto Knights. I'm oh. sorry. I'm surprised that none of you included the remake of uh, Mickey Blue Eyes with Hugh Grant. That's going to be a huge <laughs> hit. That's August. It's going to be huge. <laughs> I like to ask anybody here have any honorable mentions? They just want to mention. They want to bring. I, up. you know, I would uh, like to mention what's it called? Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Is that the name or Frozen? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I missed afterlife in the theater i wasn't like so sure then i saw it on a plane and like thoroughly enjoyed it not great but like i would be on board to see this movie if it's done well it could be fun so i'm curious about it That's okay as far yeah. as it goes yeah <laughs> <laughs> b do you have any honorable mentions yeah, and I'm going to say, I think I said, said before we started, I think that movie looks expensive. So I think at the very least, it's going to yeah. be fun to look it at. It looks and flashy and snowy and like the Ghostbusters yeah. are fighting in the snow and you're like, cool, man. <laughs> Popcorn <laughs> flick, man. Sometimes that's yeah. enough. Loud, loud sound design, too. You know, it's going to be like <laughs> ghosts, like comedy. Totally. Yeah. yeah, comedy. <laughs> One of my honorable mentions, and I have a few, but the sort of one of mine that's in line with that is Argyle. That's coming out soon. I just think it looks kind of fun. I don't think it's going to break any ground or anything. I think it'll be good. And I, that's enough for me. But I am. I want to see Argyle. Weird. Yeah, that I consider putting yeah. that on my list because it looks like just ridiculous. Like I, I was fun. sold on the trailer. Yeah. Even the <laughs> stupid shot of like the cat, like like jumping so dumb. that's the kind of stuff that i usually hate and for this i was like ah, it's appropriate and it's kind of funny <laughs> matthew vaughn movies are usually a good time so yeah I, I, that's yeah. kind of how i felt about it bringing in mark Wahlberg, arthur the king mm-hmm. that looks mm-hmm. good because there's a dog in it i will watch that my <laughs> arthur the king mention. what's arthur the king come see it arthur the king kid but true my the ones that almost really made the list for me were the taste of things i'm excited for that i think that comes out towards the summer it's the same director as the scent of green papayas it's got juliet binoche in it i think it's going to be just really lovely and touching and also lovely and touching eggers nosferatu should be great looking forward to that interesting yeah (laughs) that was definitely that was one of my honorable mentions as well 
Yeah. Which I'm not always on board with Robert Eggers, but I'm on board for whatever. I am and I'm not because but I'm, I'm so curious because I I loved the Northman because but I and I love the witch, but the lighthouse, I was like, what? I love. Yes, the I was on was board with you, on the Northman. <laughs> well, I had it. The, I had it transposed. I loved the lighthouse, but I was like. A little cooler on the Northman, but it does deserve a rewatch for me. I was tired when I watched it. So. I, I I mean I love the witch and or the the witch as is, the as it looks <laughs> the way that I'm talking, but oh, uh, but I agree with you, Nathan, on the on the the lighthouse. Like I appreciated it. It was a cinematic film, yeah. but to me, it just was so gonzo that I like detached a little bit towards the end. I was just like, okay, what the hell, like you know. Is it this was, the crowd was, that loves Bo is Afraid? Come on. So this is a- Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was one of the few times where I was seeing a movie in the in, at the theater where I was kind of wishing I was watching it at home because I needed to hit pause <laughs> while I was watching The Lighthouse. I'm like, I need a break. I need to stop. I need to stop. I need to get a drink. I need to like walk around the house or something like I, I, this is too much. <laughs> it was, it's, it's not very often, but it was like, this is, this is very art house. And I, and I, 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 I needed to, I needed to breathe. I don't know. I felt very, <laughs> it might've been, it might've been the four by three image of it. And I felt like, Oh my, like, I, I really ha- was having like a panic attack in that movie or something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, like the walls What's, are closing in on me. It's it might claustrophobic. Have been that, yeah. It that foghorn that just kept going over and over. I'm like, I just like, yeah. I was having, I was having a personal problem. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it is um, a claustrophobic location, like inside yeah. a lighthouse stranded on a, like I can totally see that, yeah. you know, like it's, that movie is close. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Nosferatu looks great. Great cast. Yeah, yeah. it's cool. I, I'm 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 down for wherever he's gonna try because I love the fact that he's one of those, you know, art house directors that that it's do, doing whatever it seems to be whatever he wants to do. So I I love that. Mm-hmm. Anything else, B, or shall we? Move no, on? that's enough. Right, great, Ellie. Anything else on your honorable mention list? Yeah. So I want to do want to see a documentary called Frida. It's gonna be playing in Amazon mm-hmm. Prime. And I definitely want to do the uh, Arthur the King, the dog with Mark Wahlberg. It looks great, that movie. Just I think it's based on a true story, too. So I'm, I think it is. Yeah. I am looking forward to seeing it. I probably won't go see yeah. it in the theaters, but I do want to see it. And then The Fall Guy with Ryan Gosling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's best mm-hmm. based on a television show back. Was it the 80s or the 70s? Something like that. Yeah, 80s, late 70s. I don't know yeah, exactly. I used to watch it when I was a kid. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I remember it too. So I want to see what Ryan is going to do because Ryan is awesome. <laughs> so so those are my three movies that I when I didn't make my list but would have made my list if I didn't have others. Great. Yeah. Great. I have a couple here. Most of them have already come up already. Gladiator 2, Beetlejuice 2. Quiet Place, day one of all we've already mentioned. But the two that I haven't mentioned yet, one of them is coming directly to Netflix on March 1st, and that's called Spaceman. And this is directed by, I think, Johan Renk. And this stars Adam Sandler, Carey Mulligan, and Paul Dano. And this is, I love it when Adam Sandler goes serious. And this is a science fiction film. He said, I don't know. All I know is that he's sent to space to collect some something from on another planet. But it's a it's a drama, science fiction film starring Adam Sandler. There is a trailer that is out there. I haven't really watched much of it. I kind of want to be surprised by this film. But this, I'm really, really curious about this movie. I I really think Adam Sandler is an amazing actor when he puts himself in the right role. So the buzz around this movie, from what I've read, is that this is going to be a this is going to catapult him into a whole nother stratosphere of of of, of uh, roles that he is going to be trying to get into. I was reading that he is trying to get away from more comedy. He's made millions and millions of dollars. He is really wants to be considered more of a serious actor. And this mm-hmm. is his attempt to 
get more into that. So this is a, a movie that I am really, really intrigued by. Johan what, Rank. What was the name of it again? Sorry, I was really curious. Space Man. Space Man. It comes out March 1st. Nice. I don't know much about Johan Rank, but I do know that he directed five episodes of HBO's Chernobyl, which was an incredible TV show, series, limited series. So, yeah, there's a lot of things behind this movie that I think have that has going for it. So I'm, I'm really curious. The other thing, uh, my other kind of mention is a movie called Wolves. Wolves, I should say. This comes out September 20th. It's an Apple original film. It's from John Watts, uh, who is the, the director of a lot of the, the recent Spider-Man movies. And it stars George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Amy Ryan, and Austin Abrams. All I know is that the, the brief synopsis, because very few details about it, about it, is it follows two lone wolf fixers assigned to the same job. And I just, you know, George Clooney, Brad Pitt working together, you know, in a, starring in a movie. So that has me really intrigued. And uh, yeah. So, yeah, those are my honorable mentions. I just want to mention a few other notable releases coming out. And anybody can just kind of say something if you're interested in it or not, or just give a thumbs up, thumbs down, like, eh, yes, no, whatever. <laughs> It'd just be like British Parliament. Like, make yes, sound. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, <laughs> These are movies that are coming out. I'm just going to mention a few of them. And you can just say, no way, yes. <laughs> you know, we've got a Sesame Street movie coming out. It's <laughs> what Sesame Street, directed by Jonathan Crizzle, Big Bird, and the Sesame Street friends are in a mysterious ex are mysteriously expelled from their neighborhood, finding themselves in Manhattan. They team up with a plucky history show host, Sally Hawthorne, uh, played by Anne Hathaway, who's on a quest to save her show and prove that Sesame Street actually exists. Is this in any way related to follow that bird? I knew somebody was going to say that. <laughs> this is going to make things so much worse in Times Square than they already are. So, yes, we have a live action Sesame Street movie coming out starring Big Bird. Yes. <laughs> Sam, you might be excited by this. Did you know that there is a remake of the 1989 Patrick Swayze classic? Roadhouse coming out. Yes, with Jake Hall. Gyllenhaal. Yeah, very excited about that. Yeah, it directed by Doug Lyman. What? I did not know that. That's awesome. It's coming to Prime Video March twenty first. That Any is, I, I, I wish it got a. I honestly wish it got a theatrical release, but I will definitely see it. And uh, I'm watching I hope it it's too. Like amped. Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching. I it loved too. Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. Edge of Tomorrow is great. There is. A movie called Abigail coming out April 19th. This is a horror film from Matt Bettinelli, Open, and Tyler Gillette, who have shepherded the last two Scream films. So, you know, not everybody here is a Scream fan, but these two also did what I thought was one of the best horror movies also. Thriller movies called Ready or Not. So I love it when they're kind of working with original IP, and this is another one of those. So I am looking forward to this one, sort of, you know, but I don't know if anyone else has heard of this or looking forward to it called Not Abigail. Not even on my radar, I didn't, but I'll didn't check know it out. About it. No, it sounds yeah. intriguing. Yeah. I'm gonna, back, back, back to Black is the Amy Winehouse biopic coming out May, 9th, May 10th. Just want to mention that. Mm. That's uh, something to, I don't know if any Amy Winehouse fans here. I, I'm... I'm a little cold on this because I think the documentary Amy was one of the most perfect documentaries that has been out in the mm -hmm. last five, six years. And I don't know if I need another Amy Winehouse story movie, but we'll see. Watchers. Directed by Ishana Knight Shyamalan. Yes, his daughter is making a movie, a feature. Follows Mina, a 28-year-old artist who gets stranded in an experience expansive untouched forest in western ireland so this is uh, yeah sounds like she's making her own kind of like weird thriller type of movie and i uh, want to throw that out there anyone uh, heard of this film i haven't heard of no, it but, but it sounds intriguing now i'm kind of interested yeah i'll go bad, see it. bad boys 4 is coming out june 14th i probably Woo! won't go see it. no no nope. i'll be there no <laughs> I'm going. No. I'll be there. No. Hey, how about Mufasa the Lion King? It's from Barry Jenkins. Uh, no. 
Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. yeah okay. I. Yeah. Is We're it a prequel or is, uh, how? No, it can't be a sequel because Mufasa it's, dies. Yeah. That's, is it? Funny. What? What? <laughs> It'd be funny if it was a, a sequel and it was just like Mufasa's carcass and it was like two hours of like a of like a crow eating it or something like that. He goes back to you know he goes back to what is it that shadow graveyard or whatever. Yeah. Oh, the this elephant the graveyard. Yeah. Yes. There is a. Th- this funny. is. I think. I think this is a working title, but it's called Project Artemis. And it's directed by Greg Berlanti. It's a story of the space race from the 1960s, starring Scarlett uh, Johansson, Channing Tatum, Woody, Woody Harrelson, and Ray Romano. Summer blockbuster, you know, mm-hmm. style space race epic. Random comment, really quick. I just before I forgot, I will say I did like Bad Boys Three, like or Bad Boys for Life. But someone made a really funny comment that said they titled the third one Bad Boys for Life. Now here comes the fourth one. That one should have been titled Bad Boys for no. Life because now it's just Bad Boys 4. <laughs> anyway. I, they should this, have run this, with like the I'm, Fast I'm sure and Furious working, titling. I'm sure yeah. it's a working title. I'm sure it's a working yeah. title. Yeah. I'm not. July 12th, we get Venom 3. There's already a third one. We're done. Yeah. I'm so tired. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I just, might see it. I mean, I like Tom Hardy, but we'll see. Yeah. And in the same year, we've got... Ishana Night Shyamalan coming out with her first feature. We have Trap, which is M. Night Shyamalan's next feature mm. on August 2nd. Interesting. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I know nothing about it. There aren't any details about it. I hope it's as good as a Knock at the Cabin. That was <laughs> incredible. Yeah. I we liked have... when they went to the beach and got old. I liked I like, that. I, I actually liked old, yeah. Mm-hmm. We have on September thirteenth, Transformers one. Origin a, story. I am so tired of. Tra- I, if you want to talk about a franchise that I've checked out on, it's Transformers. <laughs> Even though there's some good ones, I don't like. You know, I don't mean to throw it under the bus. I just have. I'm just completely disconnected. But Sam, this is the origin story set on Cybertron. Well, that changes my mind. Transformers. <laughs> On September 27th, we have Saw 11, which seems nuts because it has a release date, but hasn't even started filming yet. And nor does I even have a director yet. So I don't even know how it has a, <laughs> has a date for release, which is I just like, feel like an empty it, office set up with like a conference it, table for like when the writers do get here, there'll be coffee waiting. Like it just shows yeah. that they can like shoot this, smooth, write it, shoot it and edit it in like a week. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Maybe it's going to be so live. They just do it live. We murder you and right there. I've only got like two or three more left here. Smile 2 comes out October 18th. Now, actually, I thought Smile was one of the most effective horror films of, I think, last year, 2022. That's a really scary film for me. Yeah, Yeah, me too, Ellie. I thought it was great. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm going to run out to the theater to see this. But I, I am, but I am, I'm kind of happy there is a follow up to that movie. Yeah. I have two more to mention. Red One on November 15th is an action adventure comedy from Jake Kasdan. He directed the Jumanji films. This is uh, stars Dwayne Johnson, Chris Evans, and Nick Kroll. No other details about it, but Dwayne nope. Johnson opening action movie on November 15th. With Chris Interesting. Evans. So, yep. And the last thing I'm going to mention on December 13th, The Karate Kid, directed by John Entwistle, stars Ralph Macchio and Jackie Chan. Could be interesting. I like Cobra Kai, so you know we'll see yeah. what is what happens yeah. here. So just throwing those out there as other big notable releases for 2024. Kung Fu Panda will also have Jackie Chan, so I Kung think Fu I might Panda, just see so. that. That's yeah. March eighth. You're mm-hmm. our kung fu fan here, so I am. You'll be, you'll kung be, fu fanuary, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So I have a couple questions to ask each of you. This is very important. The most important part of the whole show. <laughs> what at the end of the year? It is December thirty first, twenty twenty four. You've seen all of these movies and more. What is going to be your favorite film of 2024. Sam, 
I cannot possibly answer that because what always happens no, that's the whole is, point. is, is yeah. to answer that. Well, it's going to be wrong because, you know, Paul Thomas Anderson might have a movie with DiCaprio out by December. And I don't know if that's this year or next year, but like in the fall, all these amazing movies come out of the woodwork that yeah, aren't I know. on the list. It it always mean, happens. Sunday if I had starts to... in a few weeks and you know, all those movies are going to be out sometime. We, we don't know. I know. I realize that. I will. But if I had to pick one because it, it truly, Oh God, man, it truly is. <laughs> does, doesn't matter. So I'm going to pick, I'll pick. This does Switzer. matter. There are stakes. Pick, there are stakes. All right. I'll pick. I don't flapper Jack and no. Man. I, I'll say Furiosa. It's going to be good. B, what's going to be your favorite movie of 2024? Lord of the Rings, and it won't even be close. Woo! Oh, that's why all I, uh, that year. I just thought of that. Wow. Well, you, I don't know. What's going to be your favorite movie of 2024? Joker 2. Mm. Joker 2! And I'm going with Sam. My favorite movie of 2024 is going to be Furiosa. If I had to pick something. And because we are all have crystal balls, we are, we are going to also pick what is going to be the box office winner of 2024. Mm. This is very important because all the uh, studios want to know this as well. Difficult. Um, might be Joker 2 might Dem be way up there. Just the, we're talking just domestic too. Yeah. yeah. Joker 2 will be big, I believe. Mm. That's what I, I, I it's, There's so many That's more, but like it's, it's, it's like impossible. Hmm. What do you have a pick? Like last year, I would have not. I mean, I would have thought it would have done well, but like I had no idea Barbie would be like a billion dollar massive success. I thought it would be successful, but I didn't realize it like went through the stratosphere. You know what I mean? Like it's so unpredictable. I'm with you, Sam. This is not easy peasy lemon squeezy. It is difficult, yeah. difficult lemon difficult. <laughs> but <laughs> I went. So I'm kind of tied between two. I'm not really sure, but like the one that's eking it out is Dune Part Two. I think that's going to be a money maker. But I could also, I could also see, I could also see other stuff making a lot of movie, a lot of money. I, I think like Furiosa. Yeah. Furiosa is the one that's like really close to me, but Dune Part Two I think is going to make a ton of money. I feel like Dune Part Two will be will do like really, really, really well. It's just hard to think mm -hmm. of like number one domestic movie of the year. I mean, it could you never know. It could be, but I have no idea. It's got a lot of buzz. It does, and it's like epic I don't know. In scale. Ad adult. It's an R-rated science fiction movie, winning box office of the year. Mm. No. no. I don't see it. I don't see Dune. Is it? Is it R rated? I thought it was PG thirteen. Is it PG thirteen? I thought it was. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I'm, it's it's the movie that I've heard the most about coming up. I mean, the first movie did not make that much money, but again, it it also didn't have the but best that was release. A weird release. It was, and a this very has been like yeah, a super anticipated. It and this has been a super anticipated release. Like it's, it's a three, it's a two hour and forty six minute film. Well, that doesn't matter. Look at Barbie and Oppenheimer, and this has Florence Pugh, Timothee Chalamet, yeah. Zendaya. Yeah. I mean, I think it could be up there. Oppenheimer made a billion dollars being a three hour movie about a you know a scientist. <laughs> I see a lot of teenagers going to the movies to see Zendaya and and uh, Timothy. Mm -hmm. And Zendaya is going to be in this one a lot more than the first one. Yeah, I'm very. I might. I might be totally off on this though. We'll find out next year. I'm no, I think. Be... I think either way, Dune too. I think it's going to do really, really well. I just the only reason I mentioned Joker too is because the first one was mm. so big. It came out in the that fall. Was a but that huge might, hit. Might capture that same audience again. You know, like yeah, yeah. But yeah. Deadpool three could be big box office too. It's just like it's hard to predict the highest box office when we don't have the full list. Well, you could say it's gonna be between those three: Joker, Dune, and you know, what's his name? Yeah. Deadpool. I think there's a fourth movie that's in the mix, 
that you're not talking about? They Ghostbusters? Just... I think they Inside just... Out. I, Inside Out 2. Inside Out 2, yeah. That'll do well. Mm. That that is that is the the family friendly movie. Maybe. All right. Anyone else know. have a pick? <laughs> I'm gonna go with Joker. All right. Joker. Joker two. Bolela do. I f- oh, it's like staring into a fog and knowing that I'm gonna be wrong, but uh, I, this is not gonna be right. But uh, do you sometimes stare at fogs and think you'll be right? Yes, when a vi- when a vision comes forth and a glowing light from the Lady Galadriel, of course. But uh, God, it's just, I'm, I'm say, looking for the biggest. Say twisters. Definitely- just say twisters and be done with it. Say it with your yeah. chest, Sam. I'll just say, I'll, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Furiosa. Mm. That's not, I don't think that's a bad pick. All right. All right. There you have it. <laughs> Woo! We did it. All right. Well, that, this was a lot of fun. All right. That was our 2024 movie forecast. This was not only fun, this was Western media level fun. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So there you have it. That, I believe, concludes our show this week. And next week, we are going to begin our next series of shows, reviews, circling our... How do we describe the movies that we're going to be reviewing? You know, I didn't really define these as much. Winter survival films? Is that what we said we are going to call them? Or Yeah, I like that. Winter survival mm-hmm. films. Winter it's, survival it's... films. Nor have we actually picked the order of these yet. We'll do mm-hmm. that off air afterwards. But folks, stay tuned for that. We're going to start a series of films, winter survival films. This is going to be a lot of fun. We will announce those movies coming up soon. And this is going to be a lot of fun. So, all right. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. <laughs> Party, Party time. time. Excellent. It's Wayne's cool. World. <laughs> well, that concludes our show for this week. We sincerely appreciate you tuning in. As a final reminder, if you're enjoying what you hear, please consider leaving a rating and review. Your support truly brightens our day. The ideal platforms are Apple Podcasts or iTunes or whichever platform you use to access our show. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, or TikTok at Back to the Frame Rate or on Twitter at Back Frame Rate. And of course, the most effective way to show your love is by sharing our episodes on your social media platforms. Your support means the world to us. Back to the Frame Rate is a proud member of the Western Media Podcast Network. Lastly, I would say really quickly, Will Farrell as that obnoxious talk show host, and he goes, What's your favorite planet? Mine's the sun. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, yeah. Sam. And, yeah, it's 2024. Woo. <laughs> That's it. The show is over. Goodbye. I want you to know it's over. Well. Bye.